This shit's about to smoke. If it hasn't already. And what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the latest feud between Umar Johnson, a.k.a. Jermaine in the house, which I think is what his real name is, thanks to one Tariq Nasheed, a.k.a. the Lip Smackin' Mac. And these two individuals apparently have stolen all the all the other beefs that have happened between the pro blacks, the hoteps, and so forth. <laughs> Within two days of us going into 2018 as having the biggest pro black beef of the year. <laughs> Part of me says this is fake. Part of me says this is scripted because you know what? Uh, we couldn't have um, Sa Netter and um, Sara Suit and Seti and um, those guys have all the shine of having the biggest beef of the year. I mean, we have to have the two big juggernauts of the, the Hotep, the conscious community, whatever they want to call themselves these days, the pro-blacks, pro-wax. We have to give, we have to give them the, the freaking, the, the super card of the year, which is what we're receiving, guys. So if you're on YouTube right now, you have nothing else better to do, it, 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 right before you're waiting for the UFC fight tonight, you, know, you, you got a stack car right here. You got a main event car right here with Umar Johnson and Tariq Nasheed. Now, what are they beefing about exactly? Well, as all of you know, if you don't, Umar Johnson is on the verge of losing his accreditation of being a doctor. He's being summoned up by the Pennsylvania State Board that handles giving out and certifying doctorates and so forth. If you all haven't known, or if you all don't know, Umar Johnson claims that he received his doctor license from a school in Pennsylvania. And his doctorate is in child psychology, I believe. But, due to the recent events that we've seen, I'm sure we aren't the only individuals who have witnessed the atrocity and the L's that Umar Johnson, that, um, <laughs> that Jerome in the house jo um, Johnson has received throughout the years. And as a result, obviously we're about to see the inevitable yanking of his license. And I don't take glee in yanking of his license. I mean, regardless of what these guys, how, how idiotic, reprehensible, or just more accurately, just, just silly these characters are. I am in no... I do not advocate in taking a man's right to feed himself. If he wants to sell off... And both of these guys, if they want to sell off and, and put black people or, or use black people to sell victimhood, then granted, I can disagree with it. I, I will disagree with it. And I will roast the shit out of both of them for it as I am going to do... As I am doing in this video. But... When it comes down to it, a hustle's a hustle, a job's a job. And if you find people silly enough to believe your half truths and your half lies and, and, and your YouTube tears, and if you can make money off of that, then by all means, God bless America. But both individuals, as discredited as they are, to be fair, brought up some good points. We're going to run down these points. We may not answer them, but we're going to run down a lot of these questions that put the credibility of these pro-blacks, or that should put the credibility of these pro-blacks, in the question. Let's start with Umar. Umar, where's the school? Where is the school? The school that you, you said you had a million dollars... In order to build, which, by the way, a school costs way more than a million dollars. I mean, I'm not sure you've seen the inflation rates these days. And the, uh, For starters, who's starting schools these days? Who's starting post-high school schools? Collegiate schools are going online these days, dude. I mean, if you want to learn some stuff, you, especially if you want to teach some young black kids on how to, you know, be pro-black and blame, blame white supremacy... And say fuck the fuck the white man. If you want to teach them all that, you already have a platform of that. It's it's called the internet, particularly social media. Just get your own YouTube account, 
your um I know you have Instagram and uh, freaking uh, Snapchat, Facebook, Instafat, you know, I, I, which goes into the second question. By the way, you can you can use those platforms to push your pro black agenda. But on the second question, why were you claiming you were celibate when you were messing around with conscious strippers? Umar, fr- freaking Jerome in the house. Come on. We need answers to that. Oh, and part of that second question, did you spend part of that donation money for the school to pay for conscious strippers? Number three, what is your obsession with cookies? We all found out that when you were touching the, uh, texting the conscious stripper, you said something along the lines of, I, I want to have your cookies. Can I taste your cookies or something like that? Umar, uh, this is one thing I will agree completely with Tariq on. You have had more than enough cookies for a freaking lifetime. Chill out on the cookies. Dro- drop the cookie. Dro- drop, drop the chocolate chip. Dro- drop the um, macadamia nut. Y- yes, it, drop the cookie crisp box too, nigga. I saw that. W- we all saw that shit. Question number four. Your connection to Frederick Douglass. Now, Frederick Douglass, his, his real descendants, or his real um, offspring, his great-great-grandkids or whoever, called your whole car out on this. They said they didn't know who the hell you were. They, they did not see you. They never remembered you at any cookouts, at, at any picnics, at, at any... Um, who dings? Any hold downs? Who nannies? Nothing. No, where were you? Never mind. I'm not meaning to go there. Um, where were you when they had the uh, Douglas cookouts? Where were you? You were nowhere. Oh, oh, we, oh, actually, we all know where you were. You were getting paid damn near nothing. To talk about pro-black, back to Africa shit on that um, hidden victimhood movie. Which to, um, the blood smacking knack didn't have the decency to tell you about. He, he didn't tell you about um, them having the movie. I, I think he had to lie to you in order to get you to do it. Which, I, I mean, oh, another question. What lives have you saved? <laughs> What lives have you saved? I'm talking about sa- I save lives, uh, like you're William Shatner on Rescue Nine One One or something. We save life. We save this many lives, dude. Get out of here. I mean, you you need to answer all this stuff and a couple more things. Oh uh, yeah, dude. Here's another question. Why hasn't James Harden sued your ass? For copping his beer. What, where? Why? Where? <laughs> Why? Seriously, I mean, I know the look is probably helping you to get all those conscious strippers and the single mothers and the other chicks who you've been tricking off your um, schoolhouse money on, schoolhouse rock fun on. But, I mean, come on, dude. Anybody else notice that that, that, that is a copyright infringement on James Harden's beer? James Harden, if you're listening to this, I will support your lawsuit fund. I will donate to your lawsuit fund. I'm sure I will get a lot more out of that than dropping some money onto Umar Johnson's schoolhouse rock fund. Or or what's left of it. Because at this point, I think he's going to need a lot of that to live off of after this is all said and done. Unfortunately. Now, the lips mac and mac. We have questions on you, my nigga. Starters, why did you have white supremacists, white people, the same white people you you talk cat shit about on hidden colors, hidden victimhoods, whatever, the codes of racism, the codes of bitching, why did you have them help you produce your movie? If you're so pro-black, keep it... 
if you talk all that shit, then why after the first hit in colors, which to be fair, you you did have a a, a black person helping you on that. All your subsequent hit and colors movies, you you had white people, just like Umar said. I'll believe him on that, because we all know how cool you are with white people. And I'm not even talking about the time when you were Miss Lip Smack and Mac. No, you, we all know the times that you were actually credible and actually pro black, but you were on campuses like Yale and um, other campuses, Brown University, maybe Harvard, helping out a bunch of. Um, Sexless freaking nerds H- helping them get game, but we all know what happened to a lot of these nerds. Half of them went MGTOW, the other half went alt right, but that's a whole other story. I've already discussed it. But yeah, we, we all know how cool you are, whites. Other question Lips Mac and Mac, if you are so pro black, then why are you married to a half black, half chew chick? She is not pro-black. She is not black. Well, not, um, well maybe, she is, maybe she acts like she's pro-black. That's a whole other story. But we all know about these dark-skinned dudes who play, claim up and down that they're pro-black and they keep it real and it's fist up in the air for life and fuck whitey, fuck white supremacy, right? But you, you, you will use anything and everything, including the one-drop rule, the same one-drop rule that white supremacists use to stop interracial mingling, particularly amongst black men and non-black women, you will use that rule in your favor in order to grab light skin and mixed chicks. You aren't the only one who does this, and I have a video coming up pretty damn soon, probably from the new year, but pretty damn soon, about how you Negroes keep using that card. Now, I'm, I'm, calling, I'm calling all your whole cards on that, but I'll be honest, I've actually discussed this with um, Guy King for a bit, and I'll let him do this video out of respect first before I make my own video. But that video is coming soon. But Lil Epps, Mac and Mac, we all, we all got to um, have some more questions for you. If you are so pro-black, why is Hidden Colors focused not on teaching people their history in order to help themselves, but they teach people history in order to let themselves view, them, view themselves as victims? As victims of white supremacy and give them more fuel to blame the white man and fuck whitey instead of getting them getting themselves up off their ass, doing for self, having their own black businesses, and, and straighten up their own communities. I mean, if hidden colors were about, um, you know, it, about it being time to, um, it, it's it's time to get up off your ass. It's time to get up. It's seven a.m. And, and clean your streets, kick, kick these drug dealers out, build these businesses back up, these boarded bit, boarded houses, boarded um, buildings. There's no excuse why a lot of these black businesses and black homes can't be occupied. Unless you're going to wait for um, those same white people you're cool with to gentrify them. I mean, it's <laughs> but, Tariq, cut a few more questions. One. Well, not one, but this is probably the fourth. But the other question I have for you is this. How much did Wash Your Ass, the album, sell? How much did that shit sell? Did that shit go um, platinum, gold, silver, even bronze? I've heard, I may have heard one song from that Wash Your Ass album. That was probably something that either you or Tommy played when two of you were cool. Or something like that. I, I'm, I'm not sure. But if you are so pro-black, why were you willing to make an album of Wash Your Ass, of basically ex- talking about bitches and hoes, exploiting black queens, and just talking about shooting other niggas? Because that's probably what the album is about. Let's just be honest. If, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to even um, ask you about the pimp stuff, because, you know, everyone... Everyone can learn from their lessons, but Tariq, if you are so pro-black, why do you live in the San Fernando Valley? I don't know if it's Fan Eyes, North Hollywood, Hollywood, wherever. Nor yeah, so, so that that region. I was told that that that's where you stay, and I'm not telling people to go to your house or anything like that. No, I'm not. I'm not going to DDoS you. 
but why are you living among a bunch of non-black people if you are so pro-black? Answer that. In the words of a, a roasterer that I used to watch, well, not even used to watch, but I, I watch since he's on here occasionally. And his words, answer me, bitch! <laughs> but you don't have to answer to me. You don't have to answer to um, Umar Johnson, or, or nor, neither does Umar have to answer Tariq. But you both have to answer to the community on the bullshit that both of you have created in your little money making black victimhood schemes. We need answers. I'm not going to ask where are the pro blacks on this because we all know a lot of them are either hiding, hiding in their little um, um, community ballroom convention centers. Not trying to answer this, trying to trying to say like, oh, yeah, y'all need to be woke. Yeah, we need to rise up. Yeah, well, what's that term everyone says? Um, we need be be conscious or some some crap like that. Either that or they're playing around with, with snow bunnies like um, what was that? Uh, <laughs> polite, polite. There you go. Polite, son, there, suit and suit and set. Whoever, whoever the heck. But yeah, well, we all know right now that brother polite. He's calling Solo TV 84 up and is asking them where the snow bunny's at. We all, we all know this is a fact. And I'm going to leave that on here. This is just, honestly, th this isn't really anything that serious. But I know a lot of you pro-blacks, you hoteps, back to Africa, will get triggered over this video. And I'll be honest, this, this is one of those kind of videos in which I'm using, I'm just making for shits and giggles. Because that's all these two guys are worth. Just a bunch of shits and giggles. If you want to get entertained, if you want to be entertained, if you want to be like, man, <laughs> if you want to get a bunch of laughs like that, yeah, these two are the shit. These two are funny as hell. These two are entertaining as hell. But when it comes to taking these guys serious, especially in regards to speaking of black issues, let's stop relying on leaders. Let's start thinking for ourselves. And ultimately, let's get the hell off this victimhood crap that these so-called leaders from your Messy Jacksons and your Al Charlton's to your um, Jermaine in the house, Jermaine in the hotel, damn! Jermaine in the hotel, or Jerome in the hotel, damn, that, that's his name, that's his new name from now on, Jerome in the hotel, Jermaine in the hotel, <laughs> and your lip smacking Max, well, let's, let's not, let's stop following these people, well, let's, let's make our own paths, no, no more leaders, no more um, pillars of the community, no more this crap, think for ourselves, but let, let's start doing that for once, and for everyone else out there, uh, yeah, yeah, Everyone else out there, always bet on X.